So the proof is that, okay, so for i between 0 and k, we define what do we mean by sigma fix the first i integers. Is that for j less than one i, to fix the j th the first j one, and so if sigma fix the first k, which means that it's the identity map, right? It fix everything. So here's the claim: if sigma fixes the third first i minus one integer, then sigma is equal to pi composite with sigma prime. Now, pi is a composition of elementary, matri uh, elementary mm, permutation, and sigma prime fixes the first i. So here we say that for any permutation fixes the first i minus 1, it is sum. Sigma prime fixes the first i in the composition with elementary uh, permutation. So, so if we finish this, then we're done. If we prove the claim, right? By doing induction backwards, we induct down, right? We induct down. So for any permutation, so like the extreme case is that you fix nothing, right? So if it fix the first one minus one, right? If it fix nothing, it fix zero integer, then if we prove the claim, which means that this permutation is some pi uh, composite of elementary and then composite with this and this for fixes the first the first permutation. And we know this one. This one we by because we're inducting down, right? So this one is like the previous case. So this one could we can apply this again. And then we go all the way back up, right, to like fix the first k, right? So, so we we're done if we prove the claim. This is what we want. So here we prove it. So, we assume if it fixes first i minus 1, right? So sig sigma fixes 1 to i minus 1. And sigma i is none of the 1 to i minus 1 because otherwise we it violates the definition of fixing them, right? So now we know that if we're lucky we have a fixes i, then we're done, right? Then you're just some sigma prime, right? Fix first i and composite with the identity map. Then we're done. So else we should, we must have strictly greater than i. So we say, suppose it's some L, then <coughs> we just set this permutation to be equal to this. And this permutation fixes 1 to i minus 1, right? Because sigma fix, fix them, and all of them, they also fix their like elementary matrix, uh, sorry, I'll, I'm always saying elementary matrix, but they are elementary permutation and they are also of them, right? So, so sigma prime fixes i 1 to i minus 1. But we also have that this fixes i because sigma i is L. And then we have L, right? And then we do this. So each of them brings L, brings L back once and back to i right this is the process so so it fixes i and now we rewrite this so we rewrite this we we try to isolate this sigma we get this and then this one is what we want this one fixes first first i and this is a composition right composition of elementary and this fixes i and i minus one so we're done okay so here's uh another lemma 27.2 so we led to we given two permutation and if sig sigma is a composition of m elementary permutation then the sign is negative 1 to the power of m. So, 
and B says that you just read them, right? And C, you just read them. And D is that, so if P is not equal to Q, and tau is, I think this one is tau. Yeah, tau. So if tau is the permutation that exchanges P and Q, and leave all other fixed, then this, the sign of this is negative one. The sign of this permutation is negative one because yeah. for this one, we just count the inversions. It's pretty simple. All right, so to prove this, we need a result first. So for step one, we're gonna prove something. We show that for any element in the permutation group or symmetry group, we have sine, the sine of sigma of EL is is negative so it means that any permutation you composite with an elementary matrix the sign will just make it negative so let's just verify this so we're given sigma we write this as the output this will one decay right and we'll have tau be this so you will have this so the tau one two three is equal to sigma of those right you change you change them right you swap them so we just compare the number of inversion and both of them so now for p not equal to q we compare sigma p and sigma q so if none of p q is equal to l nor l plus one then they remains the same Right, they remains the same as they did here. If not, then then they remains the same. So nothing happens. If p is equal to l or l minus one, then the sigma q remains the same. Sigma p switch, but it won't change the number of inversion. Right? If you're here and you swap here to here, still like if you're here and you're here, you swap to here, or you're here. We swap to here, right? It, it won't change anything. So far, so good. But if this is an inversion, right? So if this is an inversion, then this is not an inversion. And conversely, right? You think about it, so this one either has one more or one less inversion than this one, right? So we're good. It either has one more or one less inversion, so you multiply by negative one again, right? No, you just multiply by negative one again, right? It has either one more or one less, but anyways, right? So with this result, we prove the theorem. So A, what is A saying? If it's a composite of M elementary permutations, then the sign is negative one to the power of M. Okay. So first, identity sign has sign positive one, right? And we compose it M times with elementary matrix. Sorry, elementary permutation. Then we have this. We're done. Because with this result, we have this result, right? Okay. Part B, what is B saying? Oh, we have this formula. So composition becomes the product of the signs. So if by the level, we just proved that any two permutation is a composition of elementary ones, right? So if sigma is n composition and tau is n composition, then we have this formula which proves part B, right? Which proves part B. And this one, this is really simple because sine of this multiplied by this is one and we use part B, we get this result. And D, we just count the inversions. So if they swap this one and this one, Right, there's something in between them, right? So here's like the illustration. So the value of tau is like you have q and p, and you have numbers between them. So q is some p plus l. So yeah. Now we know that 
Q and P plus 1. So Q with them until with them, they're all inversions because Q used to be here, but now it becomes here, so Q is less than all of them, right? And those ones are not inversions, so we just think about the between them. And also P, right? P with them until with them, because P used to be less than them, and now P becomes greater than them, right? So this is also an inversion. So here we have L plus L minus one plus L minus one. So we have two L minus two inversions. But also Q and P is another inversion. So there's two L minus one inversions. It's odd numbers, so the sign must be negative. Right? So we're done. Okay. Okay, now with our knowledge of permutation, we're gonna make a definition. So we let f be a k tensor, we have a permutation, and we define f sigma is another k tensor. We define it by this formula. So f of v1 to vk is f with v of sigma 1 and v sigma k. So you switch between them, you switch, switch, switch this, this, blah, 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 right? It becomes this. Now. We define f is a symmetric tensor if fe remains the same for any elementary permutation. And f is alternating if you alternate your sign every time for an elementary permutation. Now, so this is the set of all alternating tensors. So a, k, v, this is the linear subspace of this of alternating tensors and give this a definition. So now followed by that, we have a definition. Is that okay? So let F be a K tensor on V we've given two permutations. So first is that a transformation F to F sigma is a linear transformation of this to this. And it has a property such that we have this this property. Okay. Now, A is says that, oh, we basically says the linear transformation means this, right? So this, but this is trivial, so it's easy to verify that, so I just skipped it. But we want to verify this to complete the proof of A, right? So we just calculate them, we just compute them. So now, this is equal to F sigma V tau 1 tau K, right? So we just let W I equal to V tau I. So we're given this. Now we compose sigma with them. So right, we go down, we got them. Now w of sigma one, which is v of sigma of tau, right? Because it makes sigma of them, right? So we tau is sigma inside. And tau is, goes outside. So tau sigma one, tau sigma, okay. Well, this is basically f of tau of sigma of of what? V1. Okay. Right? So we're done. For any V1, VK arbitrary. And B is that the tens so we're giving a equivalent a equivalent condition of being an alternating tensor. So it's alternating if only if F of sigma is sine sigma times F for all. So which means that if it's the alternating, and we have VP with VQ with P does not equal to Q. So if we have duplicates, if we have duplicates in this K tuple, then it maps to zero. Okay, this is the property. So we have this. Well, this can be illustrated by this proof. So we're given arbitrary, right? Then we know that it can be a composition of elementary tensors, uh, sorry, elementary permutations, right? Then we write f sigma is equal to this. Well, this, we can write by this by part a, right? And because f is alternating, right? We can bring negative one to the m down, right? If we define f to be alternating, then this, as an elementary one, so we bring negative one down and then 
we're bringing negative one down for n times because we are from n one, right? So if we assume f is alternating, then we have this formula, right? Right? This is by lemma. We just proved this. <laughs> if this is a composition of m elementary permutation, then they are the same. Okay, so we're done for alternating and plus this. Well, if this equals to this, if we have this property, then when a sigma is an elementary one, then we have f of elementary tensor, it's just negative 1 times f, which is that by definition, f is alternating. Right, so we're good. So we prove the equivalence. So now we verify it. If v, p, v, q, q, v, v, p equals to v, q, if p doesn't equal to q, so let tau be the one that exchanged them. So f tau is equal to f of v1, v, k. Right? This is like just lemma and part b. Just, the part we just proved, not part a. Because, well, it's alternating, right? So we can bring a sign. We can bring the sign of the permutation in front of, because it's alternating. We just bring the sign. And because this only is exchanged at both, so by the lemma, right? We just do the this one, right? This has sign negative one, right? So So is equal to negative one times this. So it is equal to negative itself. Then it must be equal to zero. Right? Alright, so now we keep going. We want to find the basis of the space. We just derived a lot of properties. So we want to find the basis of this vector subspace. So let the dimension of v be n. So if k is equal to 1, then this is just a dual space. And if k is greater than n, so for any f between them, f is determined by values on k tuples of basis of v but k is greater than n so some basis, basis element must duplicate right it must be duplicates well we know that if there's a duplicate f vanishes f vanish on vk because for any k tuple f vanish so it vanishes on vk so the, the space is a trivial space so we want to what we're really interested we want to consider when k is greater than 1 and less than equal to k. Okay, because we consider when it's equal to 1 and greater than 1. So we consider the rest of the case. So here is lemma 27.4. So it says that, okay, we give a basis for v, right? We let fg be alternating k tensors. Now, if they agree on every a setting k doubles then they agree to each other so the summary is that if two alternating k tensor if they agree on all k double bases with increasing order then they agree on the space okay so it suffices to show that they agree on basis right we proved this by last lecture it suffices to show they agree on basis so we let j be equal to a k tuple, and if there's a duplicate, then we know that f is equal to g on it because they're alternating tensors. If there's a duplicate, they it vanishes, so they're all zero map. So we assume that if all of them are distinct, and we let we let sigma be one of the permutation, such that it makes. It rearranges this so that it is increasing then then we just calculate so f of i1 ik which is these right which is by definition f of sigma of a j1 to jk right now this we can bring it down because it's alternating right also for g then then we're done because on arbitrary j right because they agree on i we assume that they agree on increasing order so 
is equal to g of the same thing. Well, this means that we can do the same thing for g and they're equal, which means that we can cancel out the sign and we say that g and f, they agree on all, all j, k double. So we're done. Okay, now, so we are given a uh, ascending k double from the set one end. Then the theorem states that there exists a unique alternating k tensor on V, such that for all ascending k tuple, we have like the this property. So the i we're given the i, and for any j including in j, it is zero. It vanishes if they're not the same. If they're not the same, and it's equal to one if they are the same. Now, these tensors form a basis for the alternating space. And a tensor, in fact, satisfies this formula. And this submission extends over all sigma from SK, all the permutations. All right? So, here's the proof. So this theorem says that So like just do another version. So used to be all k tuple, but in the alternate space it is all increasing tuple. Okay? So we show that there exist exists a unique alternator. But the uniqueness is followed by last one because we have this formula, then they agree right by last one they agree on all ascending tuples. Then they agree on everything, so they're the same by last one. And existence, we prove the existence of such group, uh, such collection of uh, elementary alternating k tensors. So we just define psi i to be this, because we're given we're given this right. We just define it to be this. Okay, we if with this definition, with this definition, we should. We're gonna show first that it's the alternating one. It's the alternating tensor. So we use the equivalence definition, right? The equivalence property. So if tau is a permutation, we just compute this. So what we want to show that we show this is equal to this. Then we're done, right? So here's the comp computation. Now this is equal to this. So this entire thing to tau can become this to tau. By the linearity of the k tensor space. Now this is by this, right? They're the same. We just pr we prove this, and this, and for this from this this we remember that this multiplied by this is equal to this, right? So we just do some changing, right? We just do some changing here, but this is either one or negative one, so it itself it is equal to like the reciprocal of itself right so right you, you can just put it in front because it's just either it's, it's equal to negative or positive once so you just put it in front right and this remains the same but here because sigma extends over all permutation but tau of sigma also extends over all permutation this is by the knowledge from the co-sets of groups and the proof is really easy i'll leave it as an exercise for you guys because it's just few lines and so this one also extends over all permutation so what we want is that the sign just extends all over as long as you extends over all sk then you're just equal to this right so here it also extends over all of them so it just by definition is equal to this we're taking sum and sum summation commutes, right? Because we're mapped to real numbers. Okay, so we're done. Now, we want to verify its value. We want to verify its value. So we want to we want to verify that this is true. So, so we given J. Yeah, this is equal to. By definition, this one, right? So j sigma 1 to j sigma k with a 
fire and we take the sum of them. Now, at most, one of them is non-zero, right? Because we're taking this one. Remember, what are those? Those are the elementary tensors, right? And this vanishes if those tuples does not equal to uh, a, a given i, right? i is the ascending tuple. And at most one is non-zero is the sigma that makes this equal to i, right? But we know that since both i and j are ascending order, so if i is not equal to j, then this vanishes. So here's like a quick example to get you know. So if i is one two three five and j is one two five six, they're both ascending, right? But they're not the same. Then for this j, for this j. No matter how you permutate them, no matter how you permutate them, it will never equal to one, two, three, five, because you're missing three, right? It's like for example, right? Then it vanishes. So as long as i is not equal to j, then you're you're vanishing. <laughs> well, which means that only when i is equal to j. And sigma is the identity map. Then it is equal to one because the sign of identity one is positive one. Right? And others, all the other vanishes. Only the one times one remains. So it takes equal to one, right? Okay. So this worked up. Now we want to verify that it's a basis for this space. So we're given f, and for any ascending i. We define di to be this, and like the similar one we did as last lecture. Now, so the j extends over all the ascending ones. It extends over all the ascending ones. Okay, it's not all k double. It's all ascending k double. Now, f is equal to g on all ascending k double basis, right? If we define like this. Now, which means that f is equal to g, right? Because by we just prove it. If it agrees on all ascending tuple bases, then you agree on everything. So, and this is the existence, and the uniqueness is that if there's a g prime, then exactly the same argument as in last lecture. So the linear representation is unique. So any f can be represented as a linear combination of elementary k tensors, alternating, and those dj are called the components of f relative to this. And the dimension is equal to n choose k. The dimension of a k v is n choose k. Right? Because okay, you're a k, right? So you have one to n, right? And so, for any k tuple, for any k tuple, say i one to i k, right? There's only one possible way to make it ascending, right? So for for any, so how many ways are there to choose k tuple, a k elements from, and there n choose k of them, but for each of the choice, there's only one possibility such that it is ascending. So it just this times one, so it put becomes itself, right? Okay. Here we have another, another. See, see the book, right? So here we have another theorem is that T, Boolean transformation, and if F is an alternating tensor, then this is also an alternating tensor. So if you pull it back, it's another alternating tensor. So F is alternating on W. When we pull it back, it's an alternating tensor on V. Okay. So here's the. Uh, proof. So, alternating tensor on V. So we want to show this is equal to sign of this, right? So we're given this. Well, which is equal to this, right? By you bring it down, and you by definition this you bring it in. So now we're gonna do some magic. So W I we define W I as T V I. So we have f of this is basically. 
W sigma I, W sigma K, which is equal to F of sigma of W1, WK. So we bring it back to F of sigma of W1 to WK. Now, this is equal to this because F is alternating tensor. Right? F is alternating tensor, so we can bring the sign down. Now, and we by definition again, right? And this remains. So we're done. Okay, so after this, we finally get to a theoretical definition of determinants that is defined in linear algebra. So a theoretical definition. We let someone, I remember it's like the, it's like the product of all, what values, singular values? No. The product of all, what's it called? Oh my god. Singular? With like the lambda, so like the the t. T oh my god, I forgot. So like the t v is equal to lambda v. Yeah, the the eigenvalues like I forgot. It's like the product of eigenvalues, product of single values. Uh, but anyways, here we have another definition. And it turns out to be equivalent to. The ones. So. E1, EN are like the standard order, standard bases, and those are like the dual base on our end, dual base. And the dimension of this is equal to 1, right? And choose N is 1. And with one elementary tensor, psi from 1 to N. And we let X be a matrix, and types of matrix for X1, Xn, so each of them are an element of RN, right? And then we define the determinant of this matrix to be equal to this. So this takes value on this. Well, it turns out to be that this definition has the property of determinant. Okay. And also, for i this, we have that determinant of x is by this, which, uh, which is like. Um, this definition right it becomes this and remember the definition of this we define in the proof of multilinear algebra and this becomes this multiplied from x and sigma n so sometimes this is the theoretical definition of determinant right in linear algebra it turns out to be equal to this right okay so here is theorem 27 is that so there's an elementary tensor and usual basis blah 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 we're given k vectors k vectors of rn it will let x be the matrix so this is a n by k matrix right but we want to define the determinant of x i we have psi i of x1 x k equals the determinant of xi. So xi denotes the matrix whose successive rows are those rows, those rows of x. So it, it becomes, it used to be n of them, right? It only becomes k of them. Right? And again, k of k. So this is, is a k by k matrix. And here's the definition. So the proof is really simple. It's three lines so this by definition equal to this and this i right i want to ik right this i so it's i want to ik multiplication and this by definition is like exactly this one so we're done so yeah uh, we're finished we finished this section lecture so in this lecture let's do a summary we define permutation permutation group so many properties and then we define alternating tensors right and for this space we have find the we found the basis of them and then finally we just as a little little fun we define the determinant in general right and yeah see you next time